Welcome to another episode where we are discussing the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Maybe we'll hit all 99. Omar says we will, inshallah. Inshallah. But once you get to that level, uh, we're going to find that not all of the names are agreed upon. Mm. And every person who's ever tried to encompass the 99 names of Allah, they've actually had to... Um, they've had to take some sort of uh, liberty. Liberty, okay, for sure. And so you have scholars like Ibn Hazm who who came up with the concept ninety nine. The hadith, okay, the hadith had itself yeah, ninety nine. So Prophet, scholars says, tried to uh, reconcile that hadith with okay, these are the names that are coming out, but they don't all agree on all the names. They don't agree on all the names and different people. So, for example, some uh, sought out the names, and some even went beyond a hundred. They okay. went beyond 99. They went to 130 or 140 or more than that. Really? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then you have people like uh, Ibn Hazm who just said, you know what? It's a name if it was, it came with the Alif Lam. Uh, Al something. Al something on it. So okay. he got up to the, the high 60s mm-hmm. and others uh, got to 99 itself. Okay. And then, of course, there's the famous list that's in everybody's houses. And that one was actually an ijtihad of one of the scholars who was narrating that hadith. And he said, they are. Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, al quddus And he listed them like that. Okay. So a lot of people... Is actually, that where the nasheed comes from? Uh, I don't know the nasheed, but sure. With, uh, I'm, sure there's lots, I'm sure there's lots of nasheeds okay. that have been made by that. And school kids memorize it like that in the Muslim world. They just say, Lillahi al-Asma'u al-Husna, Tisa'u tis'in isma. So Allahu I guess the other question, the, uh, the conflict seeker in me is wondering, which one, is there a book or a compilation of all the names that are disagreed upon? That are disagreed upon? I don't know. Okay. I think that's, that's your... Uh, Life's uh, purpose. <laughs> my, my life's calling. <laughs> my life's purpose is to, is to find the names the name. of people that don't yep. agree on. <laughs> come up with the, all of the names that people don't agree upon, and <laughs> that will be your contribution to this field. <laughs> so, um, one of the names is one of the names that I'll be talking about now, which is Al Jamil. Okay. The beautiful. Is this a is this it's, to me? It's, yeah, for sure. Okay. And, you know, people assume that this is the name of Allah Azza wa Jal. Yeah. And that it's something that's agreed upon. But it's actually not. You're not going to find it in, for example, that famous list. You're not going to find it in Jameel. But the Prophet Sallallahu did say, Inna Allah Jameelun yuhibbul jamal. He said, Allah is beautiful. Okay. He loves beauty. beauty. Yeah. So then the question becomes, is that one of his names? Where is this? Is that his hadith or is that? Uh, yeah. A man came to okay. the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had made a comment and he says, that whoever has an Adam's weight of pride will not enter paradise. Yeah. And even the word pride, by the way, is the wrong. Like it's not a What's perfect translation. Kibr. Okay. Kibr. Okay. And so the Prophet said he's going to define for us in the hadith what kibr is. But he says whoever has an Adam's weight of kibr is not going to enter paradise. And then the man said to him, Ya Rasulullah, we, we like to look good. Yeah. And then the Prophet said that's not kibr. He said, In Allah jamilun yuhibbul jamal. He said, Allah is beautiful. He loves beauty. Okay. What is kibr? He says, Al-kibr batru al-haq wa ghamtu nas It is to reject the truth uh, and to belittle people. Okay, I see what you're saying. So when somebody comes to you with... And says what, pride. Yeah. You're like, pride of what? Like, I'm proud of my accomplishments. I'm proud of my family. I'm proud of my... And they think that that's what that means. If I had Adam's weight of pride, mm-hmm. then I'm not going to enter paradise. No, kibr is something particular. And even that word for pride, by the way, there's lots of different Arabic words that would have uh, I mean, one that. can use proud in that context, but there's, this is very contextual to exactly. a thing. It's very contextual. So okay. if a person is too proud to listen to somebody, right? Or what their pride. We're going over, we're going over Al-Jameel. Al-Jameel, okay. So the context is that the Prophet Sallallahu negated that aspect. And he said, no, Allah is beautiful and he loves beauty. And okay. so the concept of Allah Azawajal being the beautiful. Okay. And Allah Azawajal loving beauty. It's not listed anywhere in the Quran. Jamil is not listed in the Quran. No, Al Jamil. Not oh, otherwise, okay. it would have been known as being a name. It wouldn't have been controversial. Got it. So Allah Azza wa Jal, and even Allah Azza wa Jal, He says, for example, "Walakum fiha Jamalun hina turihun wa hina tasrahun." And Allah Azza wa Jal speaking about uh, Al Khair wal Bighal. He's oh, talking about this, horses. This brings me to a question of like, can you? Is there any work in which it compiles? Okay, these are all the names mentioned in the Quran. These are all the names mentioned in the Quran and Hadith, and these are the names mentioned just in Hadith. I haven't come across a work that's exactly categorized like that. Okay. So I don't know. I guess that'll be to add to my list. 
Add to your list. Add to my list. Okay. So Allah Azza wa Jal is talking about uh, horses and mules and hamir and donkeys. And he says, لِتَرْكَبُوهَا وَزِينَ Allah Azza wa Jal says, they serve two purposes. One is for you to ride, huh? but the other is adornment, zina. And so, again, this is, this is Allah who's the one saying this. He's saying, I've created these animals for you to not only to, to ride and to have that purpose, but also to look good. And so, you know what? If I'm going to get a car. Make it nice. I mean, Allah. Wouldn't this be part of Ihsan? See, right? So yeah. it's like, it's not just people are like, oh, well, it gets me from point A to point B. Okay, that's great. That's one aspect of it. And it's beautiful. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. But there's also nothing wrong with me having a car for the purpose of beautifying myself. Yeah. It looks great. It's amazing, right? So there's nothing wrong with so that. So when where does one draw the line between having an awesome car and the idea of what's what's the Arabic word when it's kib? Just, not kib, the um Israf? Yes. Extravagance? Yes. Extravagance is completely relative. Okay. It is always relative to that particular individual. Okay. Because what's extravagant for you is not extravagant to somebody who's a billionaire. I see what you're saying. Okay. If you buy... If you make 12 if, bucks an hour and you buy yourself a Corvette... A $100,000 car, yeah. you're being completely extravagant. Okay. And it's just one of the easiest examples is just watches. Okay. Okay? If I buy a $100 watch, do you consider that to be extravagant? No. Not at all, right? No. But if I am you're living buying, in a country... Like a 10, 000, uh, if I'm living yeah. in a country yeah. where my salary is 50 cents an hour yeah. and I buy a $100 watch, that is the height of extravagance. Okay. Right? And yeah. so you have people will say, these people, they, this family spent $100,000 on a wedding. Yeah. Okay. The guy's like a multi-millionaire many times over. Him spending $100,000 on his daughter's wedding is actually him being incredibly conservative. Yeah. That's like the, he's doing a, a like a, a bare bones wedding for his daughter at $100,000. Yeah. So you see, it's, it's absolutely relative with regards to what is considered extravagance with regards to that. Coming back to this topic though. Um, Al-Jamal. So Al-Jamal firstly is... Husn. So Jamil and Jamal, we're grouping these together? Yeah. Okay. Jamal is actually, Jamal is just, what do you call it? It's the, uh, Jamil is a description. Okay. Jamal is the, is the noun? The noun. Okay. So Allah is beautiful. Beautiful is Jamil. It's a description. Beauty is Jamal. Okay. So the hadith mentions Jamil or Jamal? The hadith says, In Allah, Jamilun. Yuhibbul Jamal. Okay. Allah is beautiful. He loves beauty. Got it. Okay. So Allah Azza wa is Al Jamil. So everything about Allah Azza wa is Jamil. Even his names, he calls them Al Asma Al Husna, the beautiful names. Okay. Allah Azza wa created this earth, and He could have created this earth to be in any way that it, any way that He fashioned. Yeah. But when you just look at this creation, you see the beauty that's in this creation. You realize that this is a Lord that is beautiful who loves beauty. Beauty in and of itself, not only that, beauty in and of itself, the appreciation that we have in our hearts for beauty, yeah. if you think about it, is actually proof of Allah's existence. Why? Because if we were simply the result of evolution completely, mm -hmm. right? Just like every other animal. Well, animals don't stop to look at a sunset, right? Animals aren't like captured, enamored by another beautiful creature that they see. Well, what is it in human beings that makes us so um, appreciative, romantic of beauty? Yeah, right. We'll sit there and we'll be. I have a, a poem that I wrote on the subject, on this particular subject. I'm just going to read it for you, um, as it directs to God, as beauty itself directs to God. It says, "Have you ever seen a dog stunned by the sunset, or a bear marveling mountains capped by snow?" Or a camel enamored by a starry desert night. Or a bird breathless by the scenes it sees below. And if you've never seen a cat gaze fondly in the eyes of another with resolution impressed. Then maybe something extra has been placed in our souls that is not by evolution addressed. For if we're, uh, if we're animals just like all others. Then why are our souls so easily captured by beautiful places and beautiful things. By beautiful moments enraptured. Maybe the beautiful made us. And left our love of beauty a sign that we may believe in him and recognize that beauty points to the divine. So the question now is what do we do with this? Do we just, is the action point to simply go out and see beauty and appreciate it? Is to be beautiful. Be beautiful. Be beautiful in your character. 
appreciate beauty for sure. You know, a lot of people don't appreciate beauty. And what I mean by beauty is not just beauty, the physical beauty, that too, but also beautiful things that have been done I for mean, I them. See, I, think, I think there's a level of confidence that is being encouraged here. How so? In the sense that don't shy away from looking good. Be your best. Oh, of course. Not just in character, but in appearance. Of course. Of course. The Prophet ﷺ would wear a cloak and the companion would say, I would look at the moon and look at Rasulullah ﷺ and I would come to the conclusion that the Prophet ﷺ was more beautiful than the moon. Everybody knows that the Prophet ﷺ used to love to comb his hair. He used to love to oil his hair ﷺ. He loved to look good. And he was the most distant from the dunya. Yeah. The Prophet ﷺ used to love to smell good. Yeah. The thing that was made most beloved to him in this dunya was a tib and a nisa. What's tib? Tib is perfume. Okay. And then nisa. How is that different from a oud? Uh, oud is a type of tib. Okay. But oud is not the word for perfume. Oh. <laughs> it's not. Okay. I'm saying oud is a, a particular type. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So tib and nisa. So basically. A tib. A tib. Tib. Tib is clay. Gotcha. Tib with a ba at the end is. Okay. So al yep. and Nisa. Yeah. And so the Iman in this, by the way, increases people in their love of Allah. You know, we love beautiful uh, characteristics and we love beautiful people and things and places design, and, and design, and architecture. We are so attracted to beauty, it's unbelievable. And so the more a person realizes that Allah is beauty, He's the source of beauty, the creator of beauty. And you know what? When we enter Jannah and we see what no eye has ever seen, no ear has ever heard, has never been conjured up by our most wild imaginations. Yeah. And we enter into this place that was designed by Allah Azza wa Jal with every pleasure. The most blissful moment will be when we cast our eyes and see al jami That is how beautiful Allah Azza wa Jal is. All of the pleasures of Jannah become not even comparison. Nothing comes close. So we ask Allah so, so, to make so us. So the question that comes up is when, mm -hmm. when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed himself onto a mountain, is it that the mountain crumbled in its beauty? Because Musa I wanted to see Allah, right? Allah. I'm done with my section. Whenever, whenever you say the thing is. I get nervous because I don't know which way your world, your mind is going to go. <laughs> like, I was not expecting that Musa, Allah, uh, mountain question at all. <laughs> but that's what happens when you're with Bilal, you know? It's like, <laughs> I just, I, it's like I, the questions a five-year-old kid would ask. That's how uh, that's how random they are. And you just have to figure out. And uh, Is this guy serious? <laughs> it's just you don't know. Like, you're not even... Guys, if this video gets 100,000 views, right? I guarantee 100,000 people will not have thought of that question that Bilal just thought of. <laughs> if we get to a million, it's not going to, nobody, everybody's going to be like, yo, where did he get this question from? <laughs> and he's 100%. Uh, anyway, so, uh, and there's no shame, alhamdulillah. We don't know anything, then we just say, Allahu A'lam, and we, and we go on. from there. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, alhamdulillah.